The fossil of a snake with hips was found in South America, and they called it Najash Rio Greener, which takes its name from the leg snake described in the Bible. So much for science and religion not having anything to do with one another. You see, this name was published in the journal Nature. Where did they get that idea from? Well, that's what the Bible says. The Lord God told the serpent it would go in its belly and eat dust all the days of its life. And whether you read the Sunday school manual or you think about it yourself, it seems that serpents once walked, e.g. they had legs, and then they did the wrong thing, and now they don't have legs. That's change, but it's not evolution. Well, Dr. Michael Corwell said that. He should know. He's famous for finding Pachyricus problematicus. That's Latin, by the way, for what the heck is it? Um, turns out to be a snake with legs and hip bones, supposedly 95 million years old. But you see, Michael Caldwell opposed me. He was the evolutionist, and here's what he did, same as Charles Darwin. Defined evolution as change, called all change evolution, accepted any change as proof of evolution, and dismissed creation as unthinkable. But if you ask what have we actually proved, well, even if you allow the 95 million supposed years, you started out with serpents and you've ended up with serpents. Oh, we call them snakes these days. You started out with serpents who had legs and you've ended up with serpents that don't have legs. You've got creatures that have actually not evolved but devolved. They've changed but they haven't evolved. You see, uh, the same author said none of the more than 50 lineages, the groups of limb-reduced reptiles, in other words, creatures you can dig up in the rocks that used to have legs and now they don't, none of them have ever got them back, demonstrating that requisition is very unlikely because the probability at the moment is zero. Um, do you remember when we invented thalidomide and kids were born without arms and legs? Do you remember biology teachers rushing around saying, at last, we've got evidence of evolution? No, they sued the drug companies because of the degeneracies of limb loss that were involved. Well, change definitely is true, but evolution is not. So you reach the conclusion that it is, and I have no option but to call your science unreliable. I guess Dr. Robert Lawn said so too. You see, a Nobel Prize winning physicist wrote that book just in two years ago, or one and a bit years ago now. Much of the present day biological knowledge is ideological. A key symptom of ideological thinking is the explanation that has no implications and cannot be tested. You see, our opponents have largely attacked what I believe, or they haven't offered any evidence that evolution is occurring. Ah, such theories, says that Robert, stop thinking rather than stimulate it. And then he gives an example. Evolution by natural selection has lately come to function more as an anti-theory called upon to cover up embarrassing experimental shortcomings and legitimized findings that are at best questionable. I envy this guy. He's got a Nobel Prize and I don't. So I think he deserves to be taken a little bit into consideration. In conclusion, Richard Dawkins was interviewed by Bill Moyers. Is evolution a theory, not a fact? Evolution has been observed, says Dawkins. It's just that it hasn't been observed while it's been happening. That's a remarkable statement. Therefore, if that's the case, everything that you've seen and I've seen actually reproduces its own kind, as Genesis states God created them to do. No wonder Dr. Michael Rue says evolution is losing the battle. He blames Dawkins. I actually think you should blame the evidence as well. Well, last point or two. To account for evolutionary changes that take millions of years to completion solely by reference to processes that can be studied only over tens of years requires an extraordinary faith. Dr. Kemp, Oxford University. This debate is not the fact of evolution versus faith in a creator. It's a fact-based faith in a creator versus an extraordinary evolutionist faith.